This absolutely bonkers looking bit of plastic is the right half of a split ergonomic keyboard called the Dactyl Menuform. Uh, the idea behind this design being that if you can put your hands at whatever distance or whatever angle or what have you, uh, it'll save your wrists and fingies from some terrible strain later down the track. Uh, so let's get straight into the building. Uh, being a 3D printed part, it's got some massive supports underneath. Uh, Part of what contributed to a three-day build time, I think. Uh, and also, it's got that classic sheen in the light here. You can see it of a 3D printed part, uh, which will stick straight through the paint if I chose to paint it without sanding. So, we're going to have to sand it. Hey, it's me again, but in higher quality voiceover mode. Here, you can see me removing the supports, which were added by the 3D printer to allow it to print overhanging material. Most of this print is overhanging material, so there is a lot of supports to be ripped out, which you can see piling up in front of me. All right, next up we've got sandpaper. So we're gonna start out with the 120 grit, then move to 240, 320, and 1000, and then we can paint. This is more or less what an entire weekend of mine looked like. It was pretty much two days of solid sanding just to get this thing smooth enough for painting. Alright, it's all sanded, it's actually really nice and smooth now despite what it might look like. Uh, the main thing is though that all of that texture is gone, so we are ready to prime and paint it. I totally could have skipped all of this sanding and painting if I just accepted what the uh, 3D printed part looked like out of the printer. I had someone tell me that they didn't like 3D printed things because of their texture, so I set out to prove them wrong. This is what it looked like once it was painted. Uh, unfortunately, the paint I chose was a satin black and it left it very rough. So I actually went over it again with Thousand Grit very carefully and it took out all of that roughness and left it really smooth and I think it was a worthwhile step. So it's time for the switches. I got some Alias uh, Silent Clicky switches. Uh, I needed 54 of them so I bought six packs of 10. Here they are, they look like um, silent reds, if you uh, know Cherry MX better, but they do have a click in there, just, and that should be just enough to let me type uh, comfortably, because I'm just not a fan of the linear switches. If anything, I like to type on the loudest, clickiest keyboard I possibly can, but I need to make it a bit quieter this time. So in terms of fitting them in, they've got their Cherry MX profile, they've got these little you can't really see them on the camera. They got these little um, clips there, and the board itself has some nubbles, so they go in sideways. I'm just going to try and make sure they're all in the same orientation because the pins are on one side. Uh, I think I'm going to put the pins at the bottom, so something like this, and then they should just click straight in reasonably tightly. Past me is about to learn a very important lesson in double checking things that are easy to double check and not just following an online guide blindly. So, the guide told me that I only needed 54 of them, but I suppose I really should have counted, because this is the 60th one, and I kind of broke it a little bit because I jammed it in sideways beforehand. Uh, even then, I would have needed 64, so I'm gonna have to order some more. So just yesterday, I got a couple of things in the mail. I got some keycaps, which I'll show off in a second, and I got this. That is about 800 grams, or a pound for those of you living in backward society, of stainless steel, water jet cut. Uh, it's five mils thick, there you go. Uh, and the idea of this was that you can just 3D print a base and uh, be on your way. But I wanted it to be heavy because when you're using this keyboard, you're pushing kind of inwards, uh, and that can slide it, even though it's got rubber feet, some mass to hold it down would be good. And uh, I don't know, I thought stainless steel would be quite nice. It was reasonably affordable, um, but it comes and it looks like, well, aside from all the gunk on my fingers I've just rubbed off on it, I'll grab my light here. It just kind of looks, eh, right? The edges are pretty, uh, it's really hard to get a light on that. The edges are pretty, like, scuffed. So, of course this keyboard has two halves. With the other half, I sanded it with the two coarser sandpapers I could to get this more of a um, more of a traditional stainless steel looking finish, this brushed finish. It didn't take too long, but uh, 
well, this side I started going in, oh, Jesus. Uh, this side I started going in circles, which kind of screwed with it. But on this side, I think it looks quite nice. Absolute fingerprint magnet though. Moving right along to the keycaps, probably the most exciting and uh, second most expensive part of this whole endeavor. Uh, I've already assembled what I could of it, keeping in mind that we're actually missing four switches, which were the other most expensive part of it. Um, these are DSA profile, which means that they're all exactly the same. In fact, as far as I can tell, they're exactly the same no matter which way you rotate them as well. Which is very useful for this keyboard because I need to put a whole bunch of keys in places that they don't belong. So this is the left half. Uh, as you can see, I've left the letters on there because this is going to be a bit of a learning experience, especially with some keys like these ones here, where I'm not going to remember what they are and I'm going to want to look. Unfortunately, the thumb cluster is completely unlabeled because it was going to cost quite a lot to order all the different combinations of sets I was going to need to actually get that uh, all labeled up. Hand-built keyboards need to contain some form of controller circuitry that determines which button you've pressed and when. Uh, because this is a split keyboard, you actually need two controllers and then they need to communicate with each other via a cable or something. Uh, the one used for this project is a Arduino Pro Micro, which is technically not an official Arduino, um, but it is better than a lot of the options out there and it was really cheap. You know, I'm an absolute idiot. I've been trying to use this helping hands. And I've just realized that if I just turn it upside down, <laughs> then I can make gravity do the work for me. And it's going to be straight aside from anything where it's like currently the legs are bent like this was. But... It turns out that soldering is really boring to watch. Good thing I'm super quick at it. After making sure that all of the switches worked properly, I hot glued them in because uh, I would potentially want to pull keycaps off of this thing. And if there were diodes soldered in behind it, I really wouldn't want the keycap getting pulled out as well. So I've absolutely, it's absolutely disrespected this connector, but it does now plug nicely into there and comes up nice and flush out there. This keyboard is hand wired, which means I need to solder wires to every single row and every single column of the uh, matrix here. Uh, I'm putting the diodes on the rows, so I'm doing the columns first with the insulated wire so that they're all out of the way. And hopefully I have as much freedom as possible while doing the diodes. All right, so it took about three hours because each one of these uh, columns took about half an hour to do. Uh, there was a couple of instances where I cut straight through the wire uh, and I had to solder, uh, basically just reattached the rest of it uh, if I'd already done enough of it. So I've got one up here, one down here, something like that. You can barely tell. Um, and I've done my best to try and keep everything as flat as possible uh, to the base of it. So that should make it a little bit easier when I do the diodes and the rows. The diodes are only there so that the microcontroller knows if you're pressing like three keys at once, which three keys those are. They're technically not necessary, uh, really cheap keyboards don't have them, but if you're soldering everything yourself, diodes are like five cents a piece, and you're doing the work anyway, you might as well. It's, it's free end key rollover. Okay, so it took almost a weekend to solder and flash this, but I finally have something where it is actually working. Uh, as far as I know here. Yeah, Q1. This website's been a bit slow, but other than that, that's what it currently looks like underneath, which is not too bad. This all fits in quite nicely and packs down so that it actually does sit flat. Uh, I've had to watch out because I have a metal base, I have to watch out that these aren't too long and they don't short out on the bottom. All right, I've finished wiring up both sides and I've worked out that on this connector here, once it goes through the cable, it goes in like this, but the contacts don't come out the same. So you don't get black to black and yellow to yellow and orange to orange and gray, green to green. Uh, the black and the yellow swap and the orange and the gray green swap as well. So on this side, I've got power going to orange, uh, ground going to black and then data on the gray green. And so on this side, I'm going to need power, which was previously on orange to be on grey-green, data to be on orange, 
and ground to be on yellow, and that should give me the connection. Epoxy. It is a dangerous thing, but let's see how we go. I've already glued in the, um, the USB, so it's equal parts mixture A and mixture B. Mix them together and you should get about two to three minutes at 20 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much exactly what it is right now. Today's high is 22 degrees Celsius. Push. Sweet. Okay. It's all right. There we go. All right, done. Oof. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I don't even want to stop the recording right now. And we're done. Overall, it took about like four weeks to complete this, but I'm very happy with the result. Uh, I just now need to learn how to type on it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll put a link to this keyboard's GitHub in the description so you can build one yourself if you really want. I'll also include a link to a video by Zach Friedman, which is what inspired me to make a keyboard and then inspired me to make this keyboard in particular. It's a great video. Go watch him. Go subscribe to him. Yeah. See you in the next one.